Well, welcome in the precious name of Jesus. I'm glad that you're joining me, and I'm glad for a fresh word, fresh manna from heaven to bless you. Oh, Jesus is Lord, no matter what you're going through, I want you to get hold of what God is saying to you today and receive the authority of your word in, in your life to bring forth a change, to bring forth the purpose of heaven. You know, we, in this hour, we're about to celebrate Christmas. And I wanted to start by saying that I don't believe that Jesus was born on Christmas Day. And maybe that offend you, I'm sorry. Uh, but I don't believe he was even born in December. Uh, my personal opinion is that he was born uh, on tabernacles because the word declares in John that he tabernacled with us. And I can give evidence for that. Now, some people believe he was born on a spring feast, and I'm not here to debate it. They could be fully right and glory to God. My purpose and point is that while the world celebrates Christmas, it's an opportunity for us to remember and celebrate Jesus something bigger and it's a glorious time on the earth because you know you can go to places and if they allow you out and allow you to visit a mall you can hear christmas carols there's some phenomenal ones where they are preaching the gospel and there's something that changes you know everywhere you go when that message that 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 true worship is you know released in the malls and the stores i mean it can change the spiritual climate and people all of a sudden are different. And it's a glorious opportunity to share Jesus, the precious gift given. The greatest gift you can give is to be a witness, fulfill the purpose, and give Jesus in this hour. And everything you do to give Jesus, because it's about giving, because of whom we received. And so I want you to celebrate Jesus. I want you to lay hold of Jesus. Now we're talking about the names of the Lord, and I'm going to look at names given regarding Jesus what we refer to as Christmas. And I pray as we do that, the Holy Ghost would so open our eyes to see and ears to hear that we would receive the Word because it was the Word that was given and it was the Word from heaven that was the answer to all of your situations. Everything you face, the Word is the answer. The Word has life in it. The Word has an answer in it. But the Word must become absolute. And in this hour, the problem is we've made the Word watered down. We've raised up science and all this stuff let me tell you something. The Word is absolutely faithful. I am a scientist. I've worked with many scientists. And scientists have an opinion. And scientists think they know everything. But the more they come to know, the more they discover they don't know. But I know the Word. And the Word is absolute. And the Word is eternal and will remain throughout all of history. Hallelujah. And the Word, unlike anything else, has life in it. The Word is faithful. The Word has the capacity to give you the breakthrough. You need more of the Word in your life. So go to Isaiah 9. This is, of course, uh, one of the famous chapters we refer to this time of year. Many of you have got that on your Christmas cards. And let's just read this. In verse 2, The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. Now that's the thing that happened to you first, that that light had to shine on you. That light had to come into your life and change you. And it's time for us to step up and be salt and light in this hour. This is a dark hour. And I realize and recognize that many of you are going through a difficult season. And it's not easy. It's not fun. I understand that. I'm going through it myself. But we are meant to shine because there's a light that came into our lives that should be ever increasing. And this generation needs to see a light. We need to get hold of something. Are we going to allow this generation to be swept into hell or will we make a stand and say no? Will we make a stand and say souls for Jesus and make a stand to see believers that are backslidden and brought back to sound an alarm, to stand up and be a voice of righteousness and reveal Jesus like never before? It's, oh, mm, glory to God. Three. Verse 3, you shall multiply the nation, you shall increase their gladness. They will be glad in your presence, as with the gladness of harvest, as men uh, rejoice when they divide the spoil, as like when you get your breakthrough. That joy should be in you now. I want you to understand that something God wants to get into your life is that you are not dependent upon a breakthrough for joy. You're not dependent upon your circumstances to change for your joy, for your peace. They come from Jesus. And right now, everything that you know, we've raised up as our security has been shaken. And in your life, you know, if, if you want to accelerate your breakthrough, receive Jesus as absolute Lord. Receive His Word. 
and receive the gladness of His presence, because in His presence there's fullness of joy. Oh, I love to just go after the Lord and just worship, and as I begin to become aware and conscious of His presence and that joy, I just want to cling to Him. And it's like, God, give me one more minute in Your presence. And every minute I'm being changed, because there's something about His presence that's more addicting, it's more appealing than anything else. And I'm caught up in His presence. He is the Lord of my breakthrough. He is the one that I'm focused on. I need Him. My absolute need is Him, not anything else. And I repent and I'm so sorry, God, that for so long I was focused on things, on the temporal things and not the eternal things. And God is calling His church to get focused back on the eternal and not the temporal. Because if you will get the eternal, God will give you the temporal. And He knows. He knows that you have a daily need. He knows and He's faithful. And many of us have failed to see His daily provision because we've been so complaining, so focused on, but God, I need this. Get focused on Him. Begin to see the increase of His joy and the gladness. There's something about His gladness in your life. He wants to give you garments of gladness. Now, verse 4, you shall break the yoke of their burden and the staff of their shoulders and the rod of their oppression. I know about you, I can receive that. Because he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And there's a liberty that God wants to give you. There's a freedom that Jesus provided. And if you will allow him in your life, he will bring you to a place of freedom in this season, a place of breakthrough in the season. Get your eyes on Jesus. So we've been focused on all these things. We've become addicted to all these things. And God says, I want to shake that from you. I want to remove everything that you have become dependent upon, everything that you think you need to bring you back to the place where you recognize your need is Jesus. Your true need is Him. Hallelujah. Verse 6, um, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us. And I, I want to stop there and I let the Holy Ghost really speak to us in this verse. Because a child is born, but a son is given. And we have to come to the place of sonship. There came a day where Jesus, and in faithfulness and in obedience, came and was baptized, and the Lord spoke, This is my beloved Son, and decreed and released over Jesus' sonship. That was the day He would step into His fullness of ministry, where He would walk now into the wilderness and come out in the power of the Holy Spirit and begin to fulfill His call on the earth. We are, as believers, as those who have received Jesus, we've become children of the Most High God. But your destiny is to come a son. God wants to decree over you, bring you to a place of sonship. And in this season, God is trying to break off of you these things. Because as sons, you don't walk based on what you feel. We walk based in the Spirit and by the Spirit, and we walk by faith. And so these things that are temporal must be removed and shaken from you to bring you to a place of sonship where now you fulfill your purpose. Because you were called for such a time as this. You were anointed and appointed. And we may look at this hour as challenging. And you may say, I wish I lived in the days of somebody else. But you weren't called for that time. You weren't anointed for that time. You weren't appointed for the time. And if you had gone back and lived in that time period, you would have failed miserably. But you were called for this time. And you are anointed. And the Holy Ghost is available to you to live out. So you may be going through it, but glory to God, you can walk as a constant person in victory, as a son. And you can lay hold of and see now released into your life the resource of heaven and command in the spiritual realm such a respect and an authority to see breakthroughs. And this will put you in a glorious place where God can release the temporal blessing that you need into your life. Oh, hallelujah. And the government will rest on his shoulders and his authority in your life should be ever increasing. His authority, we're going to discover that in a minute, will continue to increase. Every area of my life, bowing. Every area of my life, surrendered, yielding. That in this hour, I might be a light. In this hour, I might be salt. In this hour, I might be one that reveals and magnifies Jesus. Now, I want to go into this verse because this is the part that we're going to really focus in today. <laughs> and His name will be called. And remember that we're standing on Psalm 20 where it said that, you know, we will raise our banners in the name of the Lord. We're going to go to war. Our battle 
what we're facing with the enemy. We're going to raise up the names of the Lord God by revelation. We are going to, by the Holy Spirit, have a revelation of that name in our life so that it becomes a fire in us, so that we understand it, we appreciate it, we know it. And it means something to us. And as we face something, you can pull out of your uh, spiritual weapons the right arsenal, the right weapon, the name that's relevant, that has revelation, that's a fire to attack that which the enemy is throwing at you. The Lord your provider. I've got this, God, because you are my Lord, my provider. How many people run around and you celebrate throughout the day? You know, the enemy is trying to say, you need a breakthrough. You need a job. You need healing, whatever it may be. But you're running around saying, the Lord is my healer. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord is my provider. And you walk with that revelation and you begin to decree, I am the head and not the tail. I come above only and not beneath. Everything I put my hands to prospers. And there's this word flowing out of you and light up because you carry the revelation of that name in your life. And as you face the battle, God, I understand who I am because I understand who you are. The revelation of who he is is the foundation by which you get an understanding of who you are. When I know who he is in, and, and, and who he is in my life, all of a sudden I can stand and I can now trust in the name of the Lord God. Well, others trust in chariots. Others trust in things. Others trust in certain things having to happen to happen. But see, now you've got the Lord God working behind the scenes. You've got the Lord God to make sure that the right people, the right place at the right time to give you the favor that you need to orchestrate everything, to bring it into the right place so that God can fulfill something bigger. God has got a better plan for you. God's got something greater for you. Look, we settle. And God's saying it's time to stop settling and let me decree over you sonship and give you an inheritance and bring you to a bigger place to expand the pegs of your tent and give you something greater because he's always the God who wants to bless more than we're willing to receive. Oh, Holy Ghost, open our eyes. Give us a heart that's so much expand it to receive all that heaven has for us so that we might glorify the sun in this hour. And it said he would be called wonderful. And it's his counsel, but it's actually wonderful. His first word is wonderful. It's not wonderful counselor. It's wonderful. Um, get a different translation. This is not the greatest. He shall be called wonderful. And that's, again, another bad translation. I looked at that word, and I want to share, uh, if I may, Oh, glory to God. Let me just get the right verse. When we think of the word wonderful, it is he who works wonders. And you've got to understand that in this hour, you know, because we have become people of reason and logic, we take all the miracles of God and we try to bring them to a place that, that it's not a miracle. It's just a natural occurrence. And we've lost sight that he is the God of wonders, that he works wonders, he works miracles, he works power. Oh, they all ended with the apostles. And so we continuously lose sight that he is the God who works wonders. That's who he is, and he doesn't change. And he continues to be the God who works wonders. And you can look, for example, in Psalm 15, just to give you a few references. Uh, Psalm 15, if I can go to Psalm 15 here. Psalm 15, and in Psalm 15, verse 11, it says this. I've got the wrong one then. <laughs> Let's go to Psalm 77. I put down the wrong reference. I missed it somewhere. I've got a number wrong. Psalm 77. Verse 11. I shall remember the deeds of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I shall remember your deeds, O Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. And when you continue to study on this word wonders, it would reference the miracles and wonders he did in bringing the children out of Egypt. The splitting of the Red Sea. That was a wonder. It wasn't a natural phenomenon. It was a wonder. The cloud. Now, some people say, well, that cloud was, was um, a volcano. Well, there's only one problem with that. This cloud hovered, and it would go from front to behind and moved. That's a wonder. 
And we try to naturally, you know, explain it to bring God down into our natural plane. But listen, He doesn't think like you think. He doesn't act like you do. He is the Lord God. He's the God of wonders. And when you get a revelation of that, that you've got the God of wonders on your behalf, He can work wonders. He's not restricted to the natural. He's not restricted. He's a supernatural God. And that there's more going on in the spiritual arena that's more real. And God is working if you will trust in Him, get glad in His presence, lift Him up, exalt His name, lift high His name, that He is the God of wonders. Glory to God. He is not restricted to the doctor. He's not restricted to um, people. He can do so much more. And what He's doing behind the scenes can so be beyond what you're even trying to imagine. Take the, you know, the lid off and allow Him to be the God who works wonders in your life, the supernatural God. He's bigger than you. He's greater than you. Let's continue. Counselor. So he's the God who works wonders. He's your counselor. That's a powerful thing. Let me give you some verses on that. Exodus um, 18, 19. Exodus 18. Verse 19. I'll make sure I've got this right. Hopefully got the right verse this time. Now listen to me and I will give you counsel and God be with you. Now listen to me. So I want you to see that you look at this, this verse. It is always in terms of counsel, advice, particularly regarding battles, regarding how to get your breakthrough, how to get your victory. Isn't that a wonderful thing that you have the Lord God available to you? And that in this hour, uh, you have the wonderful counselor who's the Holy Ghost. He is your counselor. On this earth, he is available to you to give you counsel, to give you advice, to give you the words to say, to show you what to do. If you will pick, take the time to be still and know that he's got stop the striving, stop all the noise of your circumstances being Lord and let him be Lord. Get into his presence and seek him long enough. Cling to him, hold fast to him until you can hear his voice and receive the counsel of heaven. What do I do? How do I respond to this? How do I say what? How do I? The Holy Ghost is there because on this, in this life, it is too great. It's too big for you, but you've got the Holy Spirit. Do not neglect the wonderful Holy Spirit. Receive Him. As receiving Him, it's allowing Him to be who He is. His authority in your life, which is in part, He is your counselor. He is there to give you that instruction, that advice. And if you will receive that advice, it will change everything. He will tell you what to do. He will give you insight. I'm so glad that a lot of time, you know, I face circumstances and I don't know what's going on. And the Holy Spirit will suddenly speak and share with me information that I needed to know. And it changes things. You're going through a discouraging day. Well, you need the counsel of the Holy Ghost, the wonderful counselor. Mighty God. Hallelujah. He's the mighty God. And I want to get to this verse. Um, Okay, hallelujah. I just want to make sure I got this. When we think of mighty God, He is the greater one. He is the bigger one. And I'm going to go to Luke chapter 11. Continue to hold your place because we're going to come back. I want to go to Luke chapter 11, okay? And Jesus said this, When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are undisturbed. But when somebody stronger than he attacks him, and overpowers him, he takes away from him all his armor on which he had relied and distributes his plunder. When the stronger strong man comes, and so the enemy turns up and says he's the strong man. He comes up and he makes this big case of how great he is. Your circumstance turn up and declare how great they are. How strong, how they are going to defeat you, how they're going to overwhelm you. They like to come in and present themselves like a flood to so overwhelm you and destroy you. It's called a strong man. And the devil always wants to puff himself up and make him so big, so great, so beyond. But when the stronger man comes in, and Jesus is the greater one, he's the mighty God, he's bigger. So what you may be facing, you face a bigger Jesus. 
We got a big Jesus and a small devil. And we need the Holy Ghost to give us such a revelation. You need to walk with that that you face a big Jesus and a small devil. So as big as the devil may think he is, Jesus is greater. And he's got to be greater in your life, greater in your mind. So when you face these situations and the devil throws at you a discouraging circumstance or situation, you get stirred up because there's a bigger Jesus in you. And how dare these circumstances try to challenge you? How dare and you speak to them with the authority of who you are in Jesus? and you speak to him with a bigger Jesus in you, and you decree the word over it. I'm the head and not the tail. Not just speaking, because listen, you know, I've been brought up where you had to confess, and if you said something wrong, you got slapped. But the word has said that that which we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. It has to be a revelation you have on the inside by the Holy Spirit where this word, that's who I am, that's my identity. That's who I am, God. And now I speak it and I decree it and I prophesy because the word says, I am the head and not the tail. Oh, get into his presence, get that word and say, God, show it to me, reveal it to me. I read in the scriptures where at times it said, Jesus hid himself. I don't want you to hide yourself, Jesus. I want you to reveal yourself in the Word and reveal who I am. Let it be a fire in my bones. Let it be an authority in my life. Come and reveal it, Jesus. And in this place, I want to be broken, changed, transformed so that I carry that authority. And when I face the circumstances, the devil tries. How dare he? Because there's a bigger Jesus in me. And that everything, all that about to be plundered because Jesus gained a far surpassing victory and he stripped the enemy of all things. And the weapons of your warfare are mighty for the pulling down of strongholds. Oh, that you might see who you are. It changes things. And now there's an authority that you have in the worst and most difficult situations to stand up and decree the purpose of heaven. To stand up and declare how big and great Jesus is in your life. Oh, hallelujah. Amen? Amen. He is the um, eternal Father, eternal Father, everlasting, He is and will always be. You cannot at any point lose sight of the fact that He is the eternal Father. And I want to go to Romans chapter 8 because again, um, let me find the right verse. Verse 14, 4, all who are being led by the Spirit of God these are the sons. Read that again. For all those who are being led by the Spirit, not their circumstances, not their situations, not whether it's a good day or bad day, not whether they got good news or bad news, not whether they got their breakthrough. All those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. For you've not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again. See, if you're walking in your circumstances, you walk in fear. And the enemy wants you walking in fear. But God wants you to walk by faith and liberty. And he said, uh, but you've received a spirit of adoption as sons by which you cry out, Abba, Father. What an authority that you have now received as you walk by the Spirit where you can now cry out, Abba, Father. So when I'm facing something, oh, the the most scary sound that the enemy can hear is when a believer steps up and recognizes who they are and cries out, Abba, Father. Not moved by their circumstances, but by a holy disturbance on the inside of them where they know who they are. And the devil's thrown these things at them to so discourage and defeat them. And they say, how dare you, devil? I got a bigger Jesus on me. Abba, Father. And they cry out. And there's a cry that penetrates heaven, that breaks beyond the ceilings and gets hold of the attention of heaven and looses and causes the Lord of the hosts of the army of heaven to turn up, causes the warring angels to turn up, but God turns up on the scene and the devil all of a sudden turns and says, I wish I had not done that. That's what I want. I want a revival so big the devil's praying for a rapture. I want a breakthrough in my life so great the devil says, I wish I'd never touched him. Because as a son, I recognize who I am, that he's my eternal father. But it requires that I am led by the Spirit. And so I need to spend time to get to know him, his leadership, his voice, and how to surrender.
and how to take my emotions, my feelings, which always want to dictate and control me and bring them captive to the Lord Jesus and say, Lord, and when I want to be discouraged and when I want to do something, no, I bring a captive and say, no, I walk by the Spirit of the living God because I'm a son. And remember, sons are driven into the wilderness, but they come out of the wilderness in the power of God. You don't come out in defeat. You don't come out barely making it through. You come out in power. And God wants to bring you out as a son in power, declaring that he is the everlasting father. That even in the most darkest, difficult situation, he is Father God. And as a son, we can come through as more than conquerors. We're not barely making it through anymore. We're overcoming. We're a victory. We're always walking in victory because of Jesus, because of the eternal Father. And we're led by the Spirit of the living God. And it continues, Prince of Peace. Mm the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Jesus said, and I want to go, and I'll make sure I've got the right verse here. John 14. Hallelujah. John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give you, do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. How can you, in the midst of the most difficult situation, have peace? Because his peace, that word peace, means nothing missing, nothing lacking, made whole. Because what Jesus did on the cross was to provide peace peace. Everything you need was presented and provided through the cross of Jesus. And he is the prince of peace. That word prince means the chief, the leader. He is the one in your life. When his authority is in your life, you have peace. And that's why everywhere you go, you carry that peace. That peace should be such a spiritual climate in your life that you're undisturbed. Why? Because I am nothing missing, nothing lacking. I am whole. I am not dependent on circumstance. I am dependent on the Lord my Jesus. He is my peace. And no matter what I face, I am in peace. No matter what comes my way, I am in peace. My heart, I refuse to allow it to be troubled because the Lord is my peace peace and I hold fast that peace and I receive that peace and I've caused everything in my life to bow every ounce of strife in my life to bow because the enemy wants to get you so discouraged so irritable that you come into the place of strife and with strife comes every evil thing it opens the door you have no idea how much you lose when you lose your peace. But if you hold fast your peace, it changes things. It changes the climate in your life. It will change the climate in your circumstances, in your home, in your marriage, in your everything you do. The Lord your peace. Stay in it. Walk in it. Let it increase in you. Let it grow in you. So that everywhere you go, peace be with you. And you can only say that when you have it. And if they don't receive it, let it come back to you because it's living. It's his peace and it has a life to it and it changes things. And you're going to see as you look at the word, when his peace turned up, it changed the climate of a situation. All of a sudden, if you go into a place and say peace and they receive it, it opens eyes to see it, ears to hear. It places everything differently. You know, if we could understand that when you go to preach the gospel and there's a receiving of that peace, but you've got to have it, it opens people up to receive. We want to go into a strifeful, difficult situation and we wonder why there's no breakthroughs. Walk in peace. Hold fast the Lord your peace. This is a season where no matter what you're going through, you have an unshakable kingdom. He is the Lord your peace. Hallelujah. You repeat, oh, glory to God. And that peace is received in the secret place where you bow. And I am going to keep going after that because he's your living hope. You cling to him. You go after him. If he truly is your living hope, then you will go after him and say, God, I need you. And you will seek him until you find, because it says, ask and keep asking. It shall be given. Knock and keep knocking. Seek and keep seeking. You got to go after him. You got to go after him with everything you've got in the secret place because that's where your answer is. That's where your breakthrough is. And when you get hold of him, and it takes time, it takes time. And you're going to find that when you're in his presence, you're being changed and you're going to delay and linger a little longer. And that peace begins to invade every part of your being, every fiber. 
I've been in places, you know, I've worked, I worked once as an aroma chemist and I was working on replacing the aroma of eggs. And, and aromas, they're very complex and they have various components and together the, the brain takes all these components and this is the smell that we interpret it. Smell is so complex, we can't imagine. And you think you serve a simple God and He gave you smell, which is exceptionally complex. And I'm a person, I mean, for 10 years I couldn't smell. They'd done, oh my gosh, I don't know, six or so surgeries on my sinuses. And finally I got time and I said, I'm after the Lord. And they said, you've lost smell because it's so badly scarred, you'll never smell again. And for 10 years I didn't. And I said, Lord, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of not being a smell. And I said, I'm receiving my smell back. And one day I was having a shower and I'm putting on the body wash and I said, I don't like that. I really don't like that smell. And my wife said, you've been using that for years. And I realized that, I said, you know, I don't like that. My smell was back. It was a good thing, but sometimes I realized there were a lot of smells I didn't like. And it changes, you know, you taste things and everything's different, that smell. And I, as an aroma chemist, there were components and one of the components smelled like roast beef. And the problem was this chemical would cling to your clothes and then it would spread to all your clothes. Well, when you're walking around and you smell like roast beef, now the first time everywhere you go, people love it. And the next day when you turn up and you smell like roast beef, they like it. And it goes the third and fourth. There comes a point like, no more. And you go home and all your clothes smell like roast beef. You get to the point, I don't want roast beef ever again because it's invasive. Well, the good thing about the Lord's peace, it's something you'll want more of. See, the difference between the things of the world and the things of heaven, the things of heaven are things you always want more of. And they're an addictive thing that always brings a blessing because the things of this world bring slavery. And you get addicted to them, they will always bring you to slavery. And you always want more because they never fulfill. But I want you to know the things of heaven more than fulfill. And yeah, you become addicted to the peace and the wonders of heaven, but they fulfill you and they call you and they bring you to liberty. And they bring a change in you. And in the secret place, you are changed. And it begins to, like that chemical, get into every fiber and it clings to you. And everywhere you go, they, they smell, they sense it. They can tell it. And they, they, they want it. And it becomes attractive to them. And it begins to open. Now some are going to repel against it because of what's in them but many people, and that's why you want that Prince of Peace in you. Oh, glory to God, it will increase your impact for the kingdom. It will change everything, but it has to be lived out. It's gonna be tested in fire. And you go through some things and you hold fast to peace because you spent the time in the secret place to be so baked, to be so filled, concentrated, overwhelmed by His peace, that you walk in it and it's got, you've, it's got long enough in your heart to get into your mind, into your emotions, into your memories, into your thoughts and they've all bowed to his peace. And I'm going to finish with this, going back to um, Isaiah 9, and we'll continue with this next time. Uh, oh, glory to God. There will be no end to the increase of his government or peace. There will be no end in your life to the increase of his authority, you know, his revival is a divine assault and it brings his authority his government and it needs to start in your life where everything bows i want sickness to bow i want poverty to bow i want all these things in my life to bow to the lordship of jesus where i am blessed not depend upon my circumstances change but because of him and i am blessed i am the head and not the tail that in this life i may be passing through but i'm victorious i'm an overcomer I'm not focused on things because many people get focused. Now, God wants to bless you with things. He wants to bless you above, and I'm not against that. But I look at my life. I don't need some big fancy car to show that I'm blessed. God, you want to give me that money? I have other things that I could put that money into. And I believe that God wants to bless his children if we get the right heart. Yeah, he wants to give you good things, but he wants to bless you, give you the power to get wealth. Why? because of his covenant, so that you can preach this gospel, fulfill the purpose. And in this hour, there's a shaking for those that are sold out. And God, if you will bring these resources to my hand, I will preach your gospel. I'll be more effective for your kingdom. That's who I think he wants to bless. 
where we are not lifting up. We're not caught in the lusts of the world. We're caught in the, the things of heaven and the increase of his government and his peace in my life. It grows daily. It needs to grow in your life daily. So I pray, Father God, each person right now stand in the gap that they would be so blessed. And I come against every uh, oppression and discouragement of the enemy. And I break it, Father God. Holy Spirit, come and reveal to them that Jesus is bigger. He's the stronger, strong man, no matter what they face, that Jesus is Lord and that his government, his authority increase in their life. Father God, that they might know you and step into the place of sonship. They can cry out, Abba, Father. Holy Spirit, draw them into the secret place. Oh, open their eyes to see ears to hear and let them be drenched, overwhelmed. Oh, saturated, marinated in the secret place with your presence, with your peace. And let them walk in the liberty that Jesus, you have provided. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that in your presence there is liberty. Oh, let that liberty overwhelm us, the liberty of your kingdom, that we walk in it. And in this hour, we'd step up and be salt and light, revealing Jesus, that this world might know in the midst of a dark time, Jesus is more than enough, that Jesus is the answer, but it's got to start in us. Show it, reveal it, and let us walk as people that are blessed above and beyond in the precious name, filled with the life of the living God, sons, Father God sons and daughters of the Most High. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Well, I thank you. I encourage you. We are, we are finally, I'm trying to work on um, a complete setup for the partnership so that I can really have a place where I can bring all the partners together. We are working on that. But please encourage you to sign up as partners because uh, we're going to have this thing in place very soon so I can communicate and we can communicate in a better way. But I am standing and believing for partners that those partners, first and foremost, are people committed to pray. Now, some of you, as the Lord leads, may help us financially. That's great because there's so many things we want to do, and they take finances. And I want you to reap in the reward. I want you to get the reward. And if it's even just that right now, all you can do is pray. Well, glory to God, pray. Join us as a prayer partner. There is no pressure. I do not manipulate, play with you. I just let... The Holy Spirit leads you. You just go as the Holy Spirit leads. But I want a place where partners can come together. They pray for one another. And that no matter what you're facing, you got people praying for you worldwide. You are, as you give, you're receiving. And you may be giving pray prayers uh, over for other people. And it opens the Lord, the door for the Lord to open and bring forth prayer warriors for you. Amen? Because we need uh, people that are standing for us in this hour. And I thank you for each one of you that's praying for me. And I want you to know that I'm praying for you. We're standing up daily for you that you'll be blessed. And I want you to know that Jesus is Lord. He has a plan and a purpose and he's faithful. No matter what you're facing, you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching.